Good evening everybody and welcome to Apex Racing TV. This is the British Sim Racers Formula Renault 2.0 Pro Series. We're at Montreal. I'm Alex Simpson. I'm joined by Lee Thompson and uh, Andrew Woodhouse will be here from uh, race 2, 3 and 4 I think um, tonight. Uh, welcome uh, Lee. Montreal Formula Renaults. Uh, you've had a little dabble in the car. You know the circuit quite well. And um, yeah, you've been having a look at some of the uh, footage in the last um, little while in uh, doing the intro and things like that. So uh, yeah, what's your thoughts about tonight? My thoughts about tonight are, um, you know, can they get through those first, you know, four or five corners and not have a massive pile up with lots of cars bouncing back off walls into, uh, into the circuit, you know, as that's the case with uh, any car you come to uh, around this fantastic circuit. Um, that, you know, it just everything gets funneled back in. Any little instance which might be pretty much uh, almost a non-event somewhere else, someone just taking a little trip into the grass can uh, very quickly make a, a big, big instant here. But um, it's a it's a great little combination here, though. You know, the, the Formula Renaults maybe obviously don't like clambering over those cars so much, but uh, they're you know nippy little things, good amount of downforce, and uh, that back straight's probably a little bit long for them. But otherwise, I think uh, great fun cars to uh, to throw around this circuit. Yeah, I think we're going to see a combination of um, sort of different setup approaches um, today. Um, I know from sort of previous seasons testing that you know you can be as fast with a really high downforce car, maximising the speed through the corners and the chicanes, um, as you can be having a car that's trimmed out, so you're maximising the speed down the straight. Of course, each have their benefits in um, in race trim. So be interesting to see um, who goes uh, what way of course four very very short races tonight 15 minutes each um, roughly um, that's obviously to uh, put in place for that um, and anybody who's new to the series doesn't know exactly what it is so yeah we have four races so we do this first one this is um, qualifying order basically governs the grid starting position and after that we have a um, we have a wheel, spinny wheel, wheel of fortune as it's been nicknamed and that basically determines the grid um, order for the second race so we reverse that amount of cars that spun could have anything from I believe 20 through to a full reverse grid um, it doesn't include any disqualified drivers um, from that as well so you can't just sort of or two laps down so you can't just finish last on purpose just to get on pole position but um, yeah so uh, very very interesting um, situation can come from there so a lot of fast drivers trying to come through can be a little bit chaotic we won't lie you can see a lot of crashes and things like that in there so um, it's just a lot of fun really and um, yeah once the uh, guys get a little bit more used to the the, um, the format I think we're going to see some absolutely epic race meetings here as well um, also as well for those that don't know there's a total sort of prize pool of this series we're looking about a 35,000 prize pool so that's a combination of uh, cash, iRacing credits, and hardware as well. So we've had some fantastic prizes being offered up by the sponsors. Precision Sim Engineering supporting this particular race uh, tonight. They have been so uh, gracious enough to um, give away one of their Formula GP um, wheels. So I think they're retailing at about £2,500. So fantastic from Simon to give that away. So some lucky person is going to win that. And the way you win prizes in this series, and this is why you want to get involved any time through it, even if you fancy just having one meeting here, the, the hardware prizes are all going to be put into like a raffle at the end of the season. Every point you score within the championship earns you one raffle point or ticket. And then there's a draw. And that's going to happen at the Sim Racing Expo in Germany in uh, September this year. And um, yeah, if... Your ticket's drawn, well, you win the prize. So uh, the points win, uh, yeah, points make prizes in this particular uh, in case. So, um, yes, yeah, worth getting involved. And, of course, there's uh, cash prizes for both the Pro and Am Championship as well as Team Championships as well in both classes. So if you're not the fastest driver and you think, well, I'm not really going to beat these guys at the front, well, don't worry, there's an Am Championship that you can come and have a, uh, have a go at as well. So we have a showdown at the end of the season. Get yourself into the top percentage of the uh, of the championship and uh, yeah the points reset basically with seven races to go and then we have a fight to see who's going to win the overall championships yeah that's really a, a great um, you know, prize hall that you guys have uh, that the series has got together 
Um, like I say, it's really interesting to see how uh, different drivers might be approaching the season in different mindsets. As you say, for some, it's just a matter of just consistently bagging those points and maybe not you know, ultimately worrying about a championship and just give, giving themselves a, a decent chance of that wrap at the end of the season. Whereas uh, some of the others are, are going to be perhaps just uh, focusing on the, the ultimate championship win, which as we know from BSL series anyway, you know, is about consistency. But uh, but nonetheless, it's, it's going to be interesting to see the, uh, the different mindsets. So uh, qualifying is underway and for the opening two laps of, uh, of fast uh, hot laps from uh, Peter Berriman and Anton Higelin. They have been uh, trading lap times at the front. So uh, just a couple of hundredths between them on their last lap and on their uh, laps just completed. Peter Berriman's now just a tenth quicker than uh, Anton Higelin in second with uh, Martin van Lusnord just a touch behind. So we'll see uh, see if we see any further developments from there. But, uh, but yeah, Antoine and Peter look to be the, uh, the cars to beat our. Yeah, been very, very quick um, this season already, so I'm not surprised to see them um, up there. And uh, Pete's been doing a fair bit of practice, so um, looking, uh, yeah, looking good for those guys. Rennie um, Osterkamp in uh, fourth place. Good performance from him. If he can stay there as well, that'd be one of his better qualifying in uh, fourth place right now. Jack Keithley um, sitting there in fifth, followed by Ash Sutton. Good to see um, Ashley uh, back as well. He's been away for a little bit. Obviously, awesome news. Um, coming out of his camp um, last week as well, so um, got himself a nice little Subaru drive for um, for the Touring Car Championship. Yeah, that's going to be a really interesting season ahead for those guys. As um, yeah, a few drivers get shuffled around, but as you say, massive opportunity for uh, Ash Sutton there, and and you know what an opportunity for uh, the BSL Series having a you know, a, a top line B British Touring Car Championship driver you know running in our iRacing Series. It's uh, it's amazing and. Uh, you know, we obviously know we do get real drivers out here, but uh, but yeah, great to see Ash, uh, Ash competing still in the BSR uh, week after week. Yeah, and of course, um, you know, Ash, yeah, he has a passion for this as well. You know, he wouldn't sit and help be an administrator in the BSR series, you know, if he didn't have a passion for it. So, um, yeah, which is which is great. It's awesome to have an ambassador like that. Um, getting involved and in, you know the more uh, the more he gets his name out there you know and the more it's going to help sim racing as well so uh, last time around Peter Berriman improved his lap time again so 32.163 that's put him nearly three temps over Antoine Higlin who is still in second uh, Rene Osterkamp just dropped one spot so Jack Keefley has leapfrogged uh, him into fourth just uh, five hundredths of a second uh, difference between those two and um, I think we're uh, just got a few uh, attempts left for these guys to uh, improve on their qualifying. We'll see if anyone perhaps uh, dives into the pits to get a fresh set of tyres and makes a final run at it. But uh, Peter Berriman just coming back across the line at the moment. We'll see if he makes any improvement at all. No, it looks like he stays at 32.163 as he was. Have a look, see where Anton's just come across as well, and um, didn't improve on there at all either. And uh, Martin, they're all sort of <laughs> in order. That's quite handy um, as they come across. No improvement for um, for him as well. Heathy just gone through, which we know that last lap was uh, just a little bit quicker. And uh, yes, yeah, so David Baker's jumped up standings as well, so he's up into fifth now. It looks like he has just reset, so that's his qualifying done. Um, we've got quite a few cars yet to set a time, so uh, a number of them are presumably going to be back of group penalties, pit starts, but uh, we'll see if any any of those are going to be uh, jumping into the uh, the top ten with any uh, any laps that they are able to put in. Yeah, I think. Um it was a bit. It was a little bit scrappy last week. Not as bad as it has been, and um, yeah, a lot of penalties. So the admins doing their thing, and uh, it won't take long for the guys to start to realise that uh, yeah, they do these things in the races. They're going to find themselves at the back very, very quickly. But yeah, a few drivers um, not to set a time that are out there. So Kip Stevens, I'm expecting him to put a lap in as he just has a uh, a little little spin. But um, currently setting 29, so just one. And uh, sorry, Alex, an instant on the uh, second chicane, a couple of cars getting collected. My camera just cut away before I could get the name of. I think mean, we've got Stephen like one Baxter of them, and one uh, of them, David Sutton. Yeah. And of course, for those people who don't realise as well, don't know, 
that if you have an accident in qualifying, that's your qualifying done. I mean, there's only 20 odd seconds left, so it's not too bad, but you can't reset and get yourself a brand new car. So you have one car, you damage it, you can um, come back and do repairs within the actual garage itself, but that's it. It's two separate incidents, actually. They didn't get together, did they? They just uh, they lost it completely on their own, just at um, almost the same time. Baxter and uh, Sutton there. One on one curb, one on the other. <laughs> Yeah, I mean these are these are tricky in these cars. You know, these little Formula Renaults they, they don't like scrambling over those curbs a huge amount uh, for the most part. But that's what you've got to do on this track. Yeah, especially uh, especially that final chicane. You know, the amount that you want to clobber the uh, the second apex there on that uh, final chicane, especially heading towards the Wall of Champions. Yeah, it's really going to gain you huge amounts of time. Um, uh, uh, an example of that, that that springs to mind is. Um, uh, I'm uh, annoying myself now because I've, I've lost his name, but uh, the, the Japanese fellow who was running with Team Ronin WCS, was it two years ago, Alex, and, uh, and stunned the grid by, by banging it on pole with uh, an extraordinary uh, extraordinary qualifying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely flew across that final chicane. That's where all his time was. Um, um, Kazuki Good, I'm was glad that. it's not me. It's yeah. just me. <laughs> yeah, Kazuki, Kazuki. that's it. Yes. So, um, so yeah, there are a huge amount of times that uh, that can be gained on this circuit, of course. But, um, but there we go. We'll see how these cars cope with it lap after lap in the uh, in the race. Just who we've got still out there? Osterkamp. He's still out there. Let's see if he can um, he can improve. Final lap for him. Uh, Vector Sim Sport Group. Get a good one in here. It's over to the right. I'm worrying, thinking this is probably just a cool down lap or something like that. And it is indeed. So, anyone else? Chris Rose, Paul Denton, is he's at speed? Is this a flying lap or is this going to be the final one? Yeah, and uh, Joss Honnick yeah. is out there on a lap still as well, but he uh, had a big, big overcook moment into the second chicane and also a little bit deep now into the hairpin. So I think he'll probably struggle to improve, but it looks like he's staying on it and, uh, and seeing what comes of a lap. Kip Stevens just coming over the finish line as well, but it looks like he's not happy. He's backed off before he's even got to the, uh, the finish line. And uh, so is so Joss as well. So that, I think, is that. Yeah, Spon Holtz as well. He's out there, but he's just um, trundling around. So I think that's everybody, Lee. Would you, um, would you mind doing the honours? Yeah, absolutely. So front row lockout for Apex Racing UK to start the evening off. Peter Berriman does get that pole position with a 132.163. Lining up alongside him then is going to be Antoine Higlin. Martin Van Lusenord then in third with Jack Keefley in fourth. David Baker in fifth, just uh, ahead of his customary sixth position as uh, our regular commentators would always remind him. Uh, Oscar Mangan then is in that sixth position with Rene Osterkamp in seventh. Ashley Sutton's ended up in eighth with Christian Rose in ninth. Paul Denton in 10th, Michael Hall in 11th, Ashley Blakehood in 12th with Jos Honig in 13th, uh, John Godfrey in 14th, Matthias Sponhots in 15th, Stephen Baxter in 16th, David White 17th, George Ratchis in 18th with Tom Depke was the last car to actually put in a time in 19th position and then we are possibly going to have up to 11 other runners taking the grid who did not put in a qualifying time due to penalties we presume or uh, maybe just not getting in a time such as Kip Stevens we saw him trying out there but yeah he failed to put in a time so we'll see uh, the order that they end up lining up on, on the grid I wonder if he did have a penalty but you know needed to make sure he didn't serve a uh, set yeah, time or anything like that yeah well I, I, I feel like if I have a back of a grid penalty I, f uh, I think they're not allowed to leave pit lane I seem to recall um, but, uh, but anyway we'll, we'll find out Well, it certainly looks like an interesting grid. It's going to make for a great race, I think, as well. Some uh, pretty tight battle in uh, going to come from that. Yeah, these guys need to have their uh, their thinking caps on a little bit as they head towards turns uh, one and two on this first uh, first lap off the grid. You know, it really does funnel in through the, uh, the, the quicker left-hander and then really tightens up for that right-hander. Uh, the guys just need to be sensible. You know, they've got a, a whole night of racing ahead of them and uh, they just want to get off to a, a clean start. Waiting for the final couple of cars to make their way 
to the grid. No, I think that's it. So pit lane starts for those. Here we go then. First round. Green, green, green. Montreal BSR 2.0 Pro Series is away. It's a good start from Berryman. Antoine got a great start as well. And Luzenord up the inside. Can't make any moves. Oh, I guess a little bit sideways through the first corner. Yeah, a little bit wide there for Luzenord. So, uh, oh, and a big wiggle as uh, Jack Keefley tries to get on the power, getting up alongside uh, Martin there. Jack has to back out of it in the end. But yeah, he did have a good chance for run, but uh, back to steps out on him. Looks like uh, maybe George uh, Ratchis just having a bit of a mis something going on out there, but everybody else so far has got through the first chicane, which is always the tricky bottleneck point, I find. The next one is going to be down at the hairpin. Yes, it looks like the, uh, the guys did a good job of making oh, sure no. they had that clean stuff. I lied. Um, <laughs> yeah, Simon Hodge and uh, Tanga, I, um, Pedrazzoli, Oh no, they're just coming out of the pits. No, that looks like they must have got together um, there, which is unfortunate. So just coming through the hairpin at the back of the circuit, then Peter Berryman and Antoine Higgin are already trying to make a slight breakaway from Martin Van Lusenut in third. Fourth still is Jack Keefley with Oscar Mangan in fifth. David Baker's dropped a position to sixth, so Oscar got ahead of him on that opening lap with Ashley Sutton, then Rene Osterkamp, Christian Rose and Paul Denton rounding out the top ten. It doesn't look like a huge amount of draft effect on this opening lap down that uh, back straight. Uh, Alex, uh, you know, how much of uh, a tow have we seen in the, in the previous races in this cars? Yeah, it, it's enough to get a move done, but you have to be inside half, well, you have to be half a second behind. Six tenths, you don't get it. Half a second, you get it. So these gaps at the moment, sort of around about seven tenths of a second, they're really not going to get any kind of advantage uh, at all. So I'm just going to sit sort of where they are and... Um, of course, when you're in big packs as well, it all negates it somewhat anyway. Got a four-car battle around P11. So uh, Michael Hall, Paul Denton, Pash Jurgis and Matthew Sponholtz all very, very close to going through turn one and two. I think it was uh, Michael Hall who went around the outside of uh, Paul Denton through the first two corners and uh, made up a spot. And Denton's under pressure now from Pash as they uh, head towards the next chicane. Pash looking to move to the inside. He's got a, just about enough of a run. Is he going to be late enough on the brakes to get the move done? He does. Gets his nose inside. And uh, Denton has to uh, slot him behind. Yeah, Paul, um, pretty fair there. Could have squeezed him a little bit more and made it a bit um, harder. But I think he realised it's still early days as well. A potential move going on ahead as well. Sutton side by side with... Um, David Baker. Yeah, David Baker. Oh, apologies, David. You always seem to get your academy livery whacked back on again. So teammates fighting at it. Um, and we will uh, we'll update that again in the um, in the break. Yeah, so they're still uh, still battling as they come to the final chicane. Looks like Ash Sutton is later on the brakes. I think David was uh, fairly sensible there, got out of it fairly early, and uh, lived to uh, to fight another day. As, Off the uh, camp under pressure yeah, from Rose Christian as well. Christian gets a, a much better drive out of that final chicane. He's going to have the inside for the uh, the tighter right hander, but uh, Osterkamp carries so much momentum through there. But uh, he manages to cut ahead, so I thought, uh, thought Christian had a good chance of hanging on in there for uh, for that uh, tighter right-hander. Yeah, again, that might just be a combination of the different um, setups that we were talking about. So perhaps a little bit slower on the straight line, but of course got all that extra downforce, so can just hold it around and um, you know be able to maintain that position. Who 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 knows? Sounds good. So so Peter Berryman now has gapped Antoine Higgins. I don't know if Antoine made a small mistake somewhere on the lap, but he's under pressure now from uh, Martin Van Lusenord. So if, uh, these guys need to uh, to stay in the draft of Peter Berryman if they want to continue to battle for the win. A little bit more of a gap then back to Oscar Mangan with Jack Keefley hanging in there. And then we've got the battle we were just watching with Ashley Sutton now trying to bridge the gap to the cars ahead with uh, David Baker then, uh, then bringing up the group behind. Yeah, that's a great little battle actually, Osterkamp there, having to uh, hold off Rose, that's where I think the main threat's going to come from, although Rene got a fair amount of uh, slipstream this time off of Baker, so a little bit less vulnerable, uh, closes in but not close enough to, uh, to get a move done and into uh, the final chicane, they all come flying through. Oh, he's very, very close. 
Yeah, Baker looks a little bit unsettled going into that chicane, I think. So he's having to defend now through turn one. Can he make the uh, same move that uh, we saw a lap before defending? He can't. Rene just oh. keeps his nose in. A little bit of contact. And uh, Rene is going to get the drive off the corner there. And David Baker is going to have to slot in. So that was uh, almost a replica of a lap before. But uh, Baker just couldn't carry that momentum through turn one. Yeah, good close. Hard... Um race in there as well they were fortunate not to uh well dave was fortunate to be able to hold on to that i think so very easy could have lost it doesn't look like any damage from uh, uh either car there as well so they'll continue to uh, go at it somewhat yeah hopefully we'll be all right wheel to wheel contact i think that should see them through so as they continue to score well that's just allowing the cars behind to uh, close slightly now as well so uh, we've got uh, michael hall and pasture just looking to make that the six car battle was uh, pash had a little uh, little sniff up the inside through the chicane and in fact he's got a much better drive off the uh, off the chicane there and he's going to have a look around the outside of a hairpin on uh, michael hall there can he carry the momentum it's going to be a matter of cutting back i think and that's exactly what pash looks to do gets a drive off corner but uh, but michael looks like he's uh, he's got a good drive also or ashley rather Yes, yeah, just and, see uh, if he can pull out. Yeah, he does indeed. Pulls out the slipstream on Hall. Side by side, going into the chicane. Oh, there's wheel contact between them. I think Pash just drifted over a little bit going into the braking zone there and uh, maybe a little bit naughty, but Hall gives him the room. And... Uh, Osterkamp now is looking like he's under a little bit of pressure from David Baker. So in fact, Baker must have lost that hot spot during that lap. So David Baker's trying to come back at uh, Osterkamp as they come through the first half of the lap there. Uh, Ashley Sutton's doing a decent job of breaking away and trying to bridge that gap, catching up with Jack Keefley. Uh, 133.6 for Keefley last time around, but actually Sutton was a little bit slower, so 33.8. So uh, significantly quicker than the cars behind as they were squabbling, but uh, not actually making the progress to the cars in front. Uh, Oscar Mangan, scorching lap last time around compared to the cars around him, a 32.8, whereas I'm seeing a 33 and up from the, uh, the cars he's battling with. So yeah, Oscar looking to be on the move. Yeah, one thing I always see with Oscar, he seems to get a little bit quicker as the um, the race meeting goes on. So, doing the same, uh, doing the same again here. And uh, we've also missed uh, change position for second place actually. So uh, Martin van Lusenord is now ahead of Antoine Higelin. So uh, it feels like a, a tough couple of laps there for Antoine. He had a little mistake somewhere early on to. Uh, drop a bit of time in one lap to Peter Berriman and then uh, lost out against Martin on that lap so uh, is that in this lap do you reckon we can should I see if I can find that yeah possibly was this lap hopefully a little look back uh, seems like they might have been battling yeah a lap ago potentially into um, the chicane oh, it's already done Martin's through so let me go back one more and we'll see if we can see it here we go so closing in this was a couple of laps ago actually in the end They come towards the uh, under the bridge. A uh, fair reasonable gap at the moment. I'm wondering if it's a, perhaps a little mistake or something from uh, Antoine. Oh, uh, yeah, he ran a little bit wide into that chicane and um, compromised his exit massively. And uh, Martin just uh, sweeps through. And uh, Ashley Sutton under pressure now from uh, Rene Osterkamp. So I think Ashley must have had a little bit of an error on this lap as well. Rene is all over the back of him and uh, looking to get a run as they head towards the hairpin. Uh, Ashley Sutton defending the inside. Rene's going to have to go around the outside, try that cutback like we saw Pash do a lap ago, but Ashley Sutton tries to cover it off. Ash goes very, very deep on entry to prevent Osterkamp from being able to take that cutback, and it works beautifully. He's got a much better drive off the corner, and uh, Ashley Sutton should survive for a few more corners. So let's have a quick run through the top 10 and as we've had these couple of changes of position, Peter Behrman still in P1, he is a good 2-3 seconds ahead of Martin Van Lusenord then in second with Anton Higelin just gaining back a little bit of Martin on that last lap, uh, tenth and a half quicker in third position. Oscar Mangan is the quickest of those cars apart from Peter, so uh, Oscar Mangan in fourth looking to close up still, fifth position is Jack Keefley in a bit of no man's land. 
and then still defending hard is Ashley Sutton in 6th with René Osterkamp in 7th, David Baker in 8th, Christian Rose in 9th and Pasteur just trying to pour his way onto the back of uh, Christian there in 10th position. Stevens out, dropping down through the order as well. Just having a look at Paul Denton, he's not too far behind uh, Michael Hall. Yeah, so uh, Ashley Sutton is really, really struggling at the minute. I wonder if uh, whatever error he had on the previous lap, where we got a little bit of damage that I'm not seeing on screen, but uh, Osterkamp is all over the back of him as they go through the second chicane, trying to line him up again, ready for the hairpin like we saw the previous lap. Same again, Ashley Sutton's going to defend the inside. Osterkamp is further alongside as they get to the uh, hairpin though, so Ashley Sutton's going to be brave if he does go deep, and he does. And and that time, Osterkamp was much more alongside. You know, it, it didn't feel quite as reasonable on my camera view for, uh, for Ash to go so deep there. But again, that defensive driving, it's worked. Osterkamp couldn't turn in. He had to straighten the wheel up again. And uh, Ashley Sutton's managed to break away. But uh, yeah, Ash is, uh, is under pressure. And Osterkamp, maybe he's going to have to try and find uh, a different spot on the circuit or a different tactic out of that hairpin. Um, because uh, there's no way by Ashley there, I don't think. Yeah, we need some Nigel Mansell bluff you know, cut back <laughs> manoeuvres yeah. going into that. It's like, surprise! Because I think that's the only way he's going to get it done if he again. does it there. Tr yeah, trying around the outside of turn one. Ash goes a little bit deep into uh, into the apex there, but uh, but Rene isn't able to capitalise. And uh, yeah, as uh, Osterkamp is uh, is pushing hard, Ashley's under pressure. Yeah, Ash is savvy. Very, very savvy when it comes to defending and uh, it's going to take something uh, to get by him. So one of, the, uh, one of the best drivers I've seen on the service for late braking as well, so really does make you work for every single move even if he has got damage so it's easy to get damage on this car as well you can get like chassis damage quite quickly and uh, it really does affect straight line speed and um, sort of downforce levels as well so um, could be uh, could be struggling out there yeah from uh, from curb strikes do you think on your chicanes yeah yeah definitely and um, the rest of the, the pack behind seem to be closing up as well so it's um, you know, it could be that could be the case. Lap times have really dropped off. So uh, Osterkamp not quite able to get as far alongside that time going into the hairpin, but it's given him the opportunity to get a, a much cleaner drive of the corner. So now he's going to maybe have a, a whisper at it as they come to the final chicane with uh, David Baker getting his uh, nose in amongst it as well, and maybe he just wants to. Uh, Keep a few car lengths back up to this final chicane, see how it plays out. Ash Sutton on the inside, almost interlocking wheels as they come into the chicane there, and uh, Osterkamp gets the drive. Ash Sutton move. decided he was beaten in the end, and uh, that took Osterkamp, what, three laps? But uh, And again, like I said, he had to find a different part in the circuit to do it, but he, uh, he got that move done, and uh, now Ash is going to be under pressure from Dave Baker. Yeah, I um, just saw um, Tom Dipke out as well the man who has zero luck whatsoever in this series at some point it's going to come good i'm sure so yeah so really this is the uh, battle to keep focusing on for now all the cars ahead are, uh, are pretty well strung out the battle for the lead looks like it's uh, not really going to develop they're all just drifting apart from each other ever so slightly so it really is about this battle for uh, sixth position and back osterkamp sutton baker rose and pasture just then in the tenth position and we've really got quite a lot of fuel spread out the circuit. I mean, it's a, it's a technical track for, uh, you know, even though it's just chicanes, really. It, you know, there is a, 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 a big difference in uh, in what you can wring out the car on this circuit. And, uh, yeah, I think we're seeing it here, really, the, the field's getting blown apart. Yeah, I really feel like th this is a place where you, you, to get the performance out of the car, you really have to make absolutely, like, pinpoint, you know, accuracy through those chicanes. So, so easy to make mistakes. And... This is really why there's a bit of separation uh, coming out here. So. And uh, Pasture yeah. just looking to make a move again on Christian Rose. Christian on the inside, down the back straight all the way, but uh, Pash isn't far enough alongside. Gets a much better line through that chicane though. I think Christian's going to be struggling as they come towards turn one. Tries to defend the inside, but uh, Pash might be uh, straight past them before they even get into the braking zone. Almost not quite. Can he uh, hang around the outside of turn one? He can, he's got a line up for turn two. And, oh, so close, the front wheel's almost touching, but that move is done. And a uh, little bit of movement there on the exit. I think maybe Pash was a bit unsure as to how close Christian was going to be for him to get back on his racing line, but uh, clean move, Pash up to no position. 
Osterkamp on uh, Keithley as well. Jack all of a sudden dropping off in yeah, uh, 36s as well. So I wonder if there's some damage again on his car. And um, yeah, Osterkamp looking very, very quick. Moves to the right. Um, and no Sutton defense. can smell an opportunity as well. Yeah. Oh, late on the brakes. Don't hit him. That was very close as well. Jack just trying to hold on really, I think now. Uh, Ashley Sutton's going to be through, I think, as they go into the braking zone. Jack doesn't really defend at all. And uh, as you say, so, so late on the brakes for uh, Ash Sutton there. So, yeah, Osterkamp up into fifth position. Ash Sutton into sixth and Jack Keefley down into seventh. Two positions lost on this lap. Rose again with um, uh, Jurgis as well. Having a little look, it's alongside going into the braking zone. Oh, they're both very late on the brakes, but uh, Rose gets the uh, position back. Good driving from him. Yeah, this car really does lend itself to this constant uh, toing and throwing between the, uh, the drivers. If you have yeah, a couple of these guys fairly closely matched, as you say, there's enough of the toe in these cars to give you a, a shout. And uh, yeah, without it being this uh, super high downforce single seater, yeah, it really does give these uh, guys the opportunity to to make moves under the brakes and uh, yeah it's uh, again circuit like this with these braking zones and the chicanes is uh, lending to some uh, some great battles that we're seeing again i wonder how different it's going to be maybe a bit later in the evening though when we start to see these reverse grids and cars desperately trying to crawl the way through the field as quick as possible i mean this first oh, race has felt pretty measured one halts around Just uh, lost it, I think, on his own there through the second uh, chicane. And, um, yeah. Wow. Not too bad. I think he's uh, I think he's just about managed to maintain his um, position. So, completing another lap then, we've got Peter Berriman still P1. And then uh, Martin Van Leusen, or sorry, in P2. Antoine, uh, Oscar uh, Mangan still trying to uh, claw his way onto the back of uh, Antoine Higgling for third. So yeah, we've got an apex top four who really have just broken away from the rest of the field and mostly because they've not really been battling. You know, apart from uh, Jack having that uh, issue somewhere last time around, this other group behind have just uh, yeah, really dropped a long way back primarily, I think, just from the, the squabbling that they've had. So Ostercamp is trying to make his way uh, forward in that fifth position, but uh, yeah, Ash Sutton is uh, is hanging on to him. We saw how much under pressure he was from Osterkamp, but he's uh, he's not dropped back straight away, so he's uh, he's hanging in there in that sixth position. Yeah, just uh, just outside the slipstream um, sort of area now as well, so he's going to struggle to get anything done. But yeah, good. What's going on with um, Rose and uh, Jurgis as well? They're almost a second apart now as well, so no chance of uh, anything going on this final lap. So. Everything looks like it's settled down. Uh, yeah, they've, they've, left, they've left it a lap early. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, um, say it's been great battling the whole way through, and as you say, we've one lap to go now. I'm scrolling through the field, and uh, and everyone is uh, is line astern. No real uh, opportunities. It's just going to be a matter of uh, keeping a clean lap in the uh, in this final lap. And um, Peter comes... Berman just getting a bit of traffic, but uh, here he comes over the line. Yeah, good drive from Pete. Didn't make a single mistake out there, really. Fully deserved that victory. And um, Martin Van Luzenord in second place again. Faultless drive from him for a P2. Antoine made that one mistake, and that's why he isn't on that second step. But uh, still a great drive. Oscar in uh, fourth. Great, great drive too. A little bit damage on his rear wing, but Osterkamp, he had a fantastic drive. He had to work for it as well. Lost some places at the start. Worked his way back through. A total of uh, net gain of two places. Great, great drive from him. Um, Ashley had a fair bit of a uh, fair few battles out there as well, so he'll be happy, I think, to uh, to take sixth place in the end, and then Baker in uh, in seventh. Yeah, so I think uh, drive of the uh, of a race there, I think, goes to uh, Osterkamp. That's that was uh, a great move that we saw at the final chicane to uh, finally get past Ash Sutton. And uh, as you were saying, Alex, you know, that if you trying to get uh, get by somebody who uh, is trying to defend Ash Sutton is is not the car you want to be behind so the yeah, Osterkamp has got to be uh, got to be delighted to have gained those uh, extra few points there
Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it was a great move as well. Very, very, you know, I mean, you had to put it all on the line if um, either driver had made a little mistake or actually gone in just a little bit too deep that time as well. It would have very easily uh, ended up in a big old pileup. Oh, apparently, um, just uh, hearing as well, we lost Baxter on the final lap as well, so a bit um, unfortunate. But uh, he should still count as long as it wasn't a disqualification. Uh, and uh, be okay for the um, uh, hearing its fuel, so he'll still be okay for the um, for the reverse grid, which I think uh, is all he'll care about, really. Uh, right, Lee, just take us, just go through the final uh, standings once again as um, everybody's coming across the finish the line now. Um, I'll get myself in um, <laughs> in some sort of order. I don't know where my head is tonight. So Peter Berman takes the first race of the night. Uh, finishing 2.992 seconds ahead of Martin van Lusenord in second, Anton Higelin then in third, Oscar Mangan in fourth, René Osterkamp, as we said, finishing fifth ahead of Ashley Sutton in sixth, David Baker finished in seventh, so he dropped a couple of spots from his qualifying position, uh, Christian Reyes in eighth, he uh, did finish ahead of Pat Jurgis in ninth, Jack Keefley lost those couple of extra spots with the uh, damage he had at the end of the race there, so he finished down in tenth, Michael Hall in eleventh with Paul Denton then in twelfth, Ashley Blakehood in 13th, Matthias Sponholtz in 14th, Daniel McCauley in 15th, Nathan Davis 16th, David White 17th, Samuel Lubert in 18th, and Kathleen Groh in 19th. And all other drivers were one lap or more down. I think probably Stephen Baxter and Joss Hinnig were the, uh, the last two cars running, I suspect. Yeah, awesome. Great, great opening race. And I think um, we're going to see some um, even more. Uh, definitely a few people with damage, so um, it's going to be an interesting mix because we've got some quick guys towards the back as well. They could end up being reversed towards the front, and um, we'll see if um, like the likes of Peter and Martin can um, can get through. Um, with that as well, I guess we should um, should bring the wheel up. There it is. And uh, yeah, we'll see exactly who is going to be on that pole position. So 20 seconds through to a fall is where we're looking at. So give it a spin. I missed the fall. It's going to be 26 or 23rd. And it's 23rd. Who's on pole then, Lee? Uh, that is a very good question, Alex, and I'm you may need to tell me I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, let me bring that up. Ah, oh, um, Woodhouse is saying it's possibly uh, Josh uh, Honig there as well. So, 23rd is as we slip. Wow, well, actually, it's showing. Oh, it will be. Yeah, it'll be uh, Josh Honig. So, he's actually 21st, but the first that's. Uh, yeah, one lap um, or less down, so uh, your Sonic will be on pole position when we return for the BSR Formula Renault Pro Series. And thank you everybody for tuning in for this little bit. Stick around, we'll be back in about 10 minutes time for race number two and the reverse grid.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group, 
to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. Welcome back to Apex Racing TV. Alex Simpson and Andrew Woodhouse here for the second uh, race of the evening. Um, Andrew, welcome. Thank you for um, yeah rushing back from um, work and all that goodness. Yes. And uh, yeah, thanks of course to uh, Lee for uh, filling in that first race as well. Um, obviously you missed. We well, caught a little bit of the action um, in the last one. So Montreal always a great uh, race circuit. And uh, yeah, the uh, this reverse grid race. Well, wow, this is going to be quite interesting. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, Alex. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, Lee did a great job. Thank you to him. He's one of our editors as well for Jinx and TV and Motors TV as well. So, um, big shout out to Lee. Does a fantastic job of that, and a uh, good job in the commentary box as well. So, yeah, um, it was a good win for Pete Berryman, wasn't it? And um, fantastic battle between Ronnie Osterkamp and Ashley Sutton. I did manage to catch the second half of the race. So. Um, yeah, you know I love Montreal, and uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll see a good one. Yeah, so your Sonic is going to be on pole position for um, this one. We'll end up with what was about 21 cars reversed onto the uh, onto the grid. So um, yeah, it does. Yeah, unlike um, the BSR uh, TC, where we always seem to have the um, 
the Richard Gore button. It definitely seems to be the uh, the Your Sonic button. He always seems to uh, to get the lucky draw, doesn't he? In fairness, on that last spin, anywhere that wheel would have landed, that would have been the Your Sonic button. <laughs> well, true, true. Uh, something that needs to be uh, may, needs to be looked at. We, we may need to see uh, what sort of fields we get in the next couple of weeks in terms of the uh, yeah exactly what the wheel will give us. Right, heading down to the grid then. Take you through the starting order for uh, race two. It indeed was your Sonic who's on pole position alongside Stephen Baxter. Then it's Kathleen Grau in third. Samuel LeBay's fourth. Fifth, David White. Sixth, Nathan Davies, our colleague. Here on Apex Racing TV, Daniel McCauley in 7th, with Matthias Sponholtz in 8th. Ninth was Blake Hood, 10th Paul Denton, 11th Michael Hall, 12th Jack Keithley, 13th Pashalis Judges, Christian Rose, 14th, 15th Dave Baker. And we're ready to go. There's some spaces on the grid. Yeah, a fair few um, grid starts, penalties oh. again. Okay, the green light is on. A lot of spaces at the front of the field. This should make it... A little bit easier into turn one for these cars. Good start by Honig. Baxter as well following him through. Then it's Grower. Then it's. Oh, White. someone off. Can't, no, I couldn't see anybody. Yeah, just off oh, wide in Stevens. turn one. As the, all the CQR cars. Uh, was... Oh, jockey for position, and one of them hits. I'm not sure who that was who hit, but um, it's Sutton who made contact, and he's actually around. Just got into the back of someone, spun himself around. Got a spin turn in, Ash Sutton. See what he can do fighting back through the field. Then Kathleen Grau now attacking Stephen Baxter into the fast chicane. Really attack this um, circuit. I really love this circuit, Alexander. I think he can really make the difference as the driver here. Oh, three wide between Keithley. I think it's Jurgis. No, it's not, sorry. It was Blake Hood, Hall, and Van Luzenord. Oh, Van Luzenord hits Blake Hood. Dutchman's around. Yeah, it spins it around and away, continues. Mangan's had some issues on this lap as well. He's reset. Angled the uh, front of his car. Oh, gone. who's that coming in really late on the brakes? I think that was uh, Gra and David uh, White being very, very conservative. But uh, Katzlin, yeah, just throwing it into um, the final chicane. Get that position back. Look at this for um, lower down the order. Christian Rose, Peter Berryman, David Baker and Osterkamp, is it? Osterkamp going through on... Christian Rose, brilliant start from Osterkamp, started 17th, I think it's about 12th or 11th now. Start there, Sutton's in the pits, I don't know what's happened to him. It's the tiniest contact, I'm really surprised that's caused that, it was just a little bit on the front wing, it just caused the car just to get a little um, unbalanced and, and around, so. Strange one. The 25 of the 28 starters still running here in the BSR Formula Renault Series. Oh, it's close back there as well. Uh, it's John Godfrey and um, Van Luzenord um, attacking um, Baker there as well. Yeah, and for second place, it's on as well. Baxter looking to get past Grauer again. Onig's away. Good start by him. Let's see what Stephen Baxter do about Kathleen Grauer. Yeah, Kathleen through and clear. I think this time he's um, definitely quicker. This time White. Pedro uh, David White's closing uh, again as well. Early um, retirements continue. Not quite sure what he's doing out there, but uh, yeah. He needs to have a little look as uh, he's involved every, every single race at the moment. Who's that? Um, Tango Pedrazzoli. Pedrazzoli, gosh. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with him. Um, he had some terrible luck at Laguna Seca. Oh, know, he's had some shocking luck, to be honest. Bonholtz on white. 
and uh, the Denton and um, Berryman, Berryman up the inside. On holds in that to lovely defend. brawn livery. Yeah, beautiful car. But flying through the air at Zolder. One of my memorable moments of the season. Into the chicane, wheel to wheel. Spot holds is through. Good move there. And White now having to defend hard from Pasalis uh, Jurgis. Jurgis down the inside. World Championship driver on the prowl. Oh, Bonholtz wide as well. He's opened the door. They're going to be side by side coming out of there as well. Ash can get the draft and the Keithley momentum. Keithley as well. Keithley got his pro license, didn't he? No, he didn't. Remember, he got no. he got wrecked on the final race of the season by um, Yao Vaz. Do you remember? And absolutely, he did not get into annihilated. the 20. No, that 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 crash cost him his pro license. Oh, I thought. Oh, right. And of course, I thought that was for the top ten, though, was it? No, no, no. That was ah. his was for um, for the top twenty. Oh my lot. God! Look at that. This lot, anyway, regardless. Heath is an excellent driver, though. I'm sure he'll bounce back. And Higgelin, oh, and Jurgis is round and into White. Still, White's going. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how Jurgis has got terrible damage. Yeah. McCauley, I think, around the outside of him. And then you've got. Uh, yeah, just Hull pulls it, pulls it up. I'm going to look at that back again. What's your, what's the view on uh, this one, uh, Andrew? I'm looking at this. I mean, okay, I know you will say he got hit from Good behind, one, but look. did he, did he, did he squeeze? Did not leave enough room. I don't think he left enough room to be honest. Just expected the driver what, behind Jurgis? to get out of it. Yeah. Comes into turn one. I think he thinks he's cleared him, but. Yeah. Never truly. It's very difficult. You don't truly clear people, do you, in turn one? No, not if they're on your outside. So. It's a little clumsy from Sponholtz in that I don't know how he expected to go through, but I think Joe just, yeah, could have left a lot more room there. That little gaggle still continues, though. I think, I think Spon, in my opinion, I think Sponholtz could have been a bit more aware of what was going on, but I think Joe just, yeah, it's Joe just as well, I think. Yeah, he just needs to be aware that, there, that if uh, there's a tiniest, tiniest little mistakes from Sponholtz there, he's going to get hit, you know? He put himself yeah. in a position where he's very, very vulnerable, to be honest. So. We've all done it. We've all stuck the nose in and sort of half-heartedly stuck the nose in, but... Yeah, you don't expect the guy to turn across you at the same time. Uh, Van Luzenord. Then he is buried in this group of CQR... CQR cars. Michael Hall behind, Christian Rose in front. David White, who somehow has very little damage, if any at all. So, oh, he's got a bit of a bent front wing, actually, looking at it. Oh, just just, behind them, you've got Yeah, lets Denton. the guys go behind, doesn't he, as well. So, White, team man. Got Denton, Blake Hood, Godfrey, and Baker. Baxter oh, coming under pressure from Berryman. And White and uh, Denton side by side. And losing on trying to go through on Hall. Sorry to keep. Uh, sorry on the Rose. Sorry to mention five or six battles at once there, but it's all right. I'm keeping up with them. You're okay. I'm seeing. I'm seeing passing moves going on. Look at this. Four as a three-car train, four-car train going down to the hairpin. Here comes. Oh, very little. Someone's. Oh dear, that's rubbish. Terrible. That, that's rubbish, to be honest. I'm not sure who that was even. John, John Godfrey. Sorry, John. But yeah, far too late. Uh, I mean, very in, fairness, rash. He went, in fairness, he went in wheel to wheel, so he didn't <laughs> cause any major damage. But I think Ashley Blake could have been being assaulted by uh, Van Luzenord on the opening lap and then um, getting whacked by Godfrey. I don't think he's going to be very happy. Well, no, you're right, he's not, because he's out, so... I think that was ended up as a disqualification for being hit twice there, so... That's the uh, problem uh, with that. And why I quite like the way that the um, Club 73 guys are doing it as well, so they just review the um, incidents, and if you need disqualifying, then, then, you, uh, then you will, but the incidents are there, and the points clock up, so... There's not an, there's not an immediate disqualification like, uh, like we see here.
Catalin Graf, yeah, and very think... close to um, Jos Honig now, seven laps to go. Yeah, and I, th I think, just back to your point, I think there's another league that we do, isn't it, where there's sort of an advised incident limit, and I think you start to lose points as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, no, that is the World League Sim Racing, That isn't is it, it. yep. Yeah. yeah, the Cup 73. Cup, Cup 73, of course, yeah. Battle at the front starting to get a bit interesting, Alex. Um, Jos Honig, now only about half a second ahead of Catalin Grau, so let's see if Grau can get, uh, get close to the Dutchman. Grau, I believe he's from... Romania, is that right, Alex? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I don't seem to have that on the data file, so... And meanwhile, behind them, these two... Um, first race winner, Pete Berryman, and Antoine Higelin going for it. Yeah, and actually, Peter's just got past Higelin as well, so... Got Don't six laps to try and hunt these though. guys down three seconds. They were two, 1.3 seconds quicker, the pair of them, um, the last lap. So um, there's a good chance that they could uh, catch the front two. These two it, need to get on with it, don't they, if they're going to survive at the front, I think. I think Catlin's got another half a second in him, if I'm honest. He's closed down uh, Jos pretty quickly. And if he can get by um, in the next lap or so, he might stand a chance of holding on to this win. And... Um, but yeah, if they, uh, oh. if they battle for too long, it's going to be very difficult. McCauley lets Van Lusenord through. Teammates there. David White coming under pressure from uh, Nathan Davies. Who's done a great job of stepping into the, to our commentary box over the, uh, the last week or so. Well, thank you to him for that. Fast driver to boot, the good commentator, Alex. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I need to give him a shout out. Actually, he's really helped us out big time. So, thank you for me. And now he's going to go down the inside here. David White, White just leaves the door wide open. Says, "Come in, sir. Come in and have some tea." He did. Through Welshman. Now David Baker's attacking Paul Denton. Baker pulls out of the slipstream. Watching a replay back of this overtake and then we'll switch up to that one. Stay with it as it's almost straight away happened. There we go. We'll see the aftermath. So yeah, Baker got a great drive, didn't he, out of the, um, out of the hairpin. Denton decided not really to go too defensive into um, the final chicane. That allows uh, Baker just to get a fairly easy move through one thing I've noticed about all these teams really uh, Apex and CQR is that they're all very evenly matched in the series aren't they and that's what I think they're, they're both very very good units and the drivers complement each other and we see them very very close to each other on the track Yeah, so, sorry mate, I uh, was just reading, uh, obviously just uh, always keeping an eye on the chat and I uh, lost myself just a little bit there, but I'm looking at uh, Osterkamp and Baker, uh, Baxter, oh, sorry. Oh, Osterkamp is through. Good move into um, the hairpin as well. Um, Osterkamp up back. nine places now as well, so great drive so far. Baxter's coming back. Any matter we're going to the chicane. Not gonna bother. Oh, Sponholtz has made a mess of the chicane. And here oh. comes Osterkamp. And here comes Van Lusenord and Baxter. There we go, hold on to your hats. Round the outside, Osterkamp, too wide. Just a bit wide, I think, there. Oh, he's gonna get the traction though, Alex, somehow. Yeah, he did. I uh, think Sponhot's slightly wide on the apex as well. Opened the door up a little bit. Bit of wing damage for uh, Osterkamp. The side by side through the chicane. Oh, good Very work. rarely does it work. They've managed to pull Van it Lu off. Because Van Luznod has got nowhere to go. Sponhot's on the inside. On the inside for this uphill chicane. Is he going to throw it in? He does. Osterkamp has to go wide. He has to give the room to Matthias Sponhot. Sponhot's around the outside. Here comes Van Luznod as well. It's a great battle, this. Baxter is there and. Is that Macaulay? Here's Macaulay as well. 
Press the wrong button and now I'm on the wrong car. Uh, so, on Holtz. Loses the place of Van Luzenor. Good driving from both of them around. Very rarely do we see too wide through the chicanes even manage to work. So, not done through it twice that there. Oh, Spawn Holtz messes the braking up. Nearly got hit by Baxter. And uh, Macaulay did a hell of a job to avoid them all. Here comes Baxter now. Once again, the advantage of the slipstream pulls out to the left and gets more slipstream. Oh, he's not going to make it three wide, is he, Macaulay? I thought that would have been silly. Oh, he's lost the back end of the car. Comes across. Oh. Fortunately, misses everybody, but that could be a will penalty. get a slowdown. Can he get it served quickly enough to um, maintain his position in front of Hall? Here comes Hall. Going to be difficult, but I think he's got away with it. Hall up the inside. Hall. Now he's there. still serving it. Oh, Macaulay's fighting back. Doesn't want to hit Michael Hall here. Hall around the outside. Good work by Hall. I'm Advantage. afraid we missed the, missed the lead battle as well, changing hands. So, Oh, there was all sorts going on there, though, mate. Not a lot we can do. We're going to have to go back and find that, maybe, if we can. I don't know. Yeah, here we go. So we'll just get a little recap of that on screen now. It's so coming out of the hairpin. And um, looks like Peter's got a, um, a good run coming out of there just in the draft. There's a bit of traffic ahead as well for, um, for Hornig. Grower, sorry. And um, Peter, yeah, just got the draft. Is he going to get alongside? Is he gonna, are they going to go battle? No, Jos just uh, lets him go through in the end. The wall of um, or the wall of champions. So that's chicane, and I'm thinking um, Higlin is going to do. He's going to get by very very quickly as well. So, so how yeah. did Berryman get past Grower then? Uh, that was um, yeah, good point. Is that st that's still to come? So let's just. Uh, he's past Honig as well. Honig's had a slowdown, so he's down to fifth. Oh, shocker. So we're doing 137s now, so yeah, miss massive problems. And oh, it was um, a little mistake from um, from Honig that allowed uh, Higlin through as well. Just seeing what how exactly here um, Peter got um, got the lead as well. Uh, very very close under the bridge to the second chicane. He's got, oh, Antoine hitting the curb very, very hard. Got away with it. Oof. Osterkamp nearly hit the wall. Have a look. Oh, this is going to be pretty much very similar, I think. Just gets a great drive for Pete out of the hairpin. Maximising that traction was he out of the slow corners and using it to his advantage, it looks yeah. like. Yeah, in the slipstream. It's going to be quite late on the... Um, on the Breaks, I think, if he does it, no. Nah. Clearly alongside, and um, Katzen doesn't really defend the inside at all. So let's Peter get through, and yeah, that's how it will happen. Baxter is very close to Sponholtz now. This is eighth and ninth. Baxter's got a good drive off the hairpin. It's very close coming in. Nearly ran into the back of him, but to avoid. Now he pulls out to the left. Side by side once again, Sponholtz is good on the brakes into that chicane. Baxter got a really good run though, took that beautifully. Much better drive off of it. Goes to oh. the left, he'll have the inside. Got the overlap that he wants. That always was almost, tricky here. Ah, oh, Sponholtz oh. good, sweeps across. A yeah, good late breaking. That was almost Lewis and Jensen territory over by that inside wall. Yeah. Higlin for tenth of a second behind um, Grout right now. We're on the last lap of the it's race that. as well. This one's flown by. Might have one go really into the hairpin. He's only chance Higlin. Grout's going to have to defend here. Do not want to leave the door open for the Frenchman. Here he comes. The outside. You have to get a monster under uh, cut back here oh he almost oh. ran to the back of him very close though now is he alongside 
It's too he's too close, isn't he? He hasn't got enough draft, so he hasn't got a straight run. on fight. Not got a run at all. Now he's got one. That's why he pulled over to the side. A little bit of momentum. They are side by side. Now what's he gonna do? Is he gonna go for the outside? It's almost impossible. Cuts back through the final corner comes oh. Peter Berryman. Berryman's gonna win the race. Wins race two. We're very close for P2. Who's gonna take it? Oh, oh got no power. idea. That now was by very, very close. One hundredth of a second. Great racing between the two there. And they're still going between Macaulay and and uh, Rose. Oh, that's very close as well. It's going to be Macaulay. Only just, though. Brilliant work there. And, uh, oh, Cullinan out of fuel. Oh, dear. Stevens out of fuel. Stevens is out of fuel as well. <laughs> oh, cripes. By a lap. Stevens might just be able to yeah. close that back. I don't know. Kip will get there. Don't know, you know. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure he will. He's slightly uphill, I think. Oh, and I think he might just about make it. It's going to be the best finish ever. Pulling an e easy goner, I'm afraid. <laughs> no Evans one else is crawling over the line. 50 Ks. Come on. Come on. Go. That's it. He's gone. He's completely out. He's coasting. He's gone but now. He, but he makes it. <laughs> He's over. One minute forty two behind. There you go. Ah dear. Although what that that, that does mean actually is that uh, Ralph Cullinan, um, because he was a lap down, he might get the he's pretty much gonna have the old reverse grid wheel to himself, isn't he? That's it. Yeah, exactly. I think he's gonna I think he's on pole by default. Right, here's the thing, do we actually need to spin the wheel or not? Because the wheel starts at 22, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, something like that. So 22 was eight laps down. I don't think we even need to bother. <laughs> but I don't know if we have to or not. You're going to deny me the chance to no, spin the I, wheel? Well, no. <laughs> I'll spin it anyway. I can't, <laughs> stop, I can't stop you. <laughs> Here, look. We'll just do it anyway. Who's on pole? Come on, be a fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's close enough anyway, it's 22. So, 22. So, it'll probably be Ralph Cullinan, let's be honest. We'll see about that, though, because he didn't actually. Well, he did, he was on that down, wasn't he? So, probably will be. Yeah, that, um, after that anticlimax, then, um,. <laughs> it was a great race. I really enjoyed the race. Good stuff out there. Yeah, some good, some good battling all through actually. So, yeah, more of the pretty, same. I think it was for the pretty next clean one. after the first uh, couple of laps or so. So, um, yeah, we only lost a few really, considering we lost uh, six cars. Oh, seven. Oh, sorry, that count. We lost seven cars. Eight if you include Cullinan. I'll take you through the finishing order, then Pete Berryman wins by 2.7 from Kathleen Grau. Berryman was 21st on the grid as well, really, really good performance. Um, Antoine Igelin in 3rd, and Jack Keithley 4th, Jos Honig in 5th, Martin Veluzno 6th, 7th, Rennie Osterkamp, 8th, Matthias Sponholz, 9th, Stephen Baxter, 10th, Michael Hall, Daniel McCauley in 11th, Christian Rose 12th, Dave Baker in 13th, 14th, Paul Denton, 15th, Nathan Davies, uh, Tom Depker, 16th, uh, Samuel Liber in 17th, David White, 18th, John Godfrey, 19th, 20th, Kip Stevens, 21st, Ralph Cullinan, and then the cars one lap down, well, the cars more than one lap down, Ashley Blakehood, Pascalis, Judges, uh, Simon Hodge, Tanya Ped Pedrazzoli, Ashley Sutton, Oscar Mangan, and Josh Thompson. Right then, so that's two down, two to go here at the circuit, Gilles Villeneuve, 
So we'll be back with more action here on Apex Racing TV right after this break. Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. 
Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to the Circuit Shield Villeneuve and the BSR Formula Renault series here on Apex Racing TV. Andrew Woodhouse and Alex Simpson with you for this one. And we've had two great races already tonight. Except for two more here at the home of the Canadian Grand Prix. Alex, um, entertaining stuff so far. And we thought this would be a good track, track and car combination. It's proved it so far. Uh, yeah, definitely. We've seen some good battles out there. We've seen some, uh, we've seen some not great stuff as well. And, um, you know, again, I think that just comes down to the guys just getting used to everyone and how the series needs to uh, play out and when to make moves and when not to make moves and things like that. But, uh, yeah, um, again, the admins are going to have some, uh, some work cut out, I think, after this one to review it all. Yep. Um... Valentine's Day, no love lost between <laughs> some of the drivers out there. So, um, two and a half minutes left of qualifying. Just uh, take some time out to remind you that this particular race is brought to you by Leo Bodner and also by ProSim. Really do, um, Leo Bodner really do have some of the best training systems out there. Alex. Sim a great venue for uh, doing some testing out, maybe as well. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, ProSim have been nice enough to give us one of their Quaif um, sequential shifters um, to give away as well at the end of the year, as well as um, a half day in the sim uh, simulator at ProSim in London for uh, three people. So, and uh, Leo uh, Leo Bodnas has been. Give us nothing short of, you know, a, a sim steering version 2 steering system, you know, I mean, what a, prize. Piece of kit, that. what a prize, you know, again. Um, I could win that. Exactly, you could win I've that. I've had some points. You've, you've had some, some points. points. Anyone can win so, it as long as they get some points. So, but uh, yeah, that's... It's, it's a good time because I think my wheel's just broken. So. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, it's not going to be until September, so it's probably not such a good time after No, all. maybe not. No, that's true, actually. But, uh, yeah, um, if you fancy who... winning yourself a, a, a sim steering, you know, um, come and have a play for a, for a night. Get some um, get some entry points in there, and uh, and then we'll see in Germany who will be that winner. For those who think, oh, half a day in the simulator doesn't sound like a lot, believe me, you'll be knackered after half a day. Uh, that'll be just about as much as you can do, I reckon. Yeah, and because obviously it's, you know, it depends what you want to go, but, the you know, they really crank all the forces up in the oh. sim as well, so... You know, it will take oh, it out of you. No, no, um, no Logitech G27 as your um, as the steering wheel there. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what's just broken. <laughs> so, um, I have mean, said that though, it's been that's been a good wheel for me for for quite a long time. But it's, um, yeah, I don't know whether it's the uh, the fleshy bit behind the wheel that's the problem, or it's the uh, contraption itself. I'll have to figure that one out. But um, certainly hasn't been a problem so far. For um, Peter Berryman, has it? Alex, two wins. Very, very good. Good start to the um, to the meeting as well. So um, slightly smaller grid as well is going to allow him to get through a little bit, a little bit easier. Valentine's Day definitely helping on uh, on that circumstance. Now we've got to have a little, um, got to address it a little bit. Obviously, a lot of Apex cars on the grid. We know this. Um, a few CQR cars as well. But really, it's about the individual honours mostly in this uh, in this series. Really, when it comes down to it, in terms of the the glory that you will get, I think. Uh, yeah, the I team mean, prize money is obviously there, but exactly the te the teams there. You know, I'm, I'm not going to shy away. There's an academy team in there. They end up fighting it out between themselves, though. I think that's exactly, going to be the exciting yeah. thing. You know, we put a team in there. The academy guys joined forces to put a team in there as well. And, uh, you know, CQR put a team in there. There's not many teams. I think um, you know, some of the guys who are running as privateers need to start to work together as well to create teams out there because there's a lot of a stake in the team's championship. Yeah, there's still a long time to go as well. Remember, this series finishes in September at the Sim Racing Expo in Germany. We're hoping to bring you a potentially live coverage of final rounds. Uh, as they happen on the stage at the Sim Racing Expo, that's what we're hoping. So, trying to finalise all that, but Alex, that could be pretty fantastic if we get that done. Right. Uh, 
Ralph Cullinan in the pits, not taking the start, so it's John Godfrey on pole position. Green, green, green. The green light is on here at Montreal. Godfrey's alone on the front row, so he's got a free run down to turn one. David White on the inside. Oh, I see it was a free roll, Bosch. Contact between Godfrey and White. Oh, oh, he's knocked off. Oh, my God. Oh. Well, that's a calamity. Yeah, absolute disastrous start. That is, an, that is possibly one of the worst starts by an individual uh, driver I think I might have seen in, in a while. Yeah, White up the inside, obviously, and um, John didn't see it coming, got hit. I think he would have got hit no matter what, mind you. Um, and then after that, he was just a... Um, it was just the... Uh, like a billiard ball wasn't he out there and for what and he hit he hit everything in a oh he hit everything in a apex livery i think um and we mentioned the tango pedrazzoli before who has absolutely zero luck well he just went straight through john godfrey well there you go absolutely just, no issues for him oh he has got a bit of front wing damage though so it hasn't been all rosy hit, in fairness he did just hit a car into the uh, oh okay into the chicane so uh, yeah <laughs> I'll be white. We oh, should stay man. with him. We should start and just watch him. It's guaranteed that something is going to happen. Here comes Samuel Lebert. Going to try and beat David White to the punch into the final chicane. Oh, White very loose as well. Almost lost it. Had to get out of it. So free reign for uh, Lebert. He's had a bit of a... Well, we haven't seen much of uh, Lebert. He's had a lot of penalties, it's fair to say. And um, a lot of damage. So seen him since uh, sort of the last at, win I think so look at the midfield here Baker's involved and Jurgis then behind him Thompson Grauer and Mangan side by side as well Grauer goes through Bonholtz and Higelin Higelin was punted off massively He's on uh, by uh, John Godfrey in the first couple of corners. Bonholtz has got a great run, so has Keithley. See what Jack Keithley can do. Bonholtz is going to have to defend, possibly from Keithley, more than attacking Higgler. Samuel the Bear's gone, completely gone at the front. Michael Hall having a great scrap with um, David White and Martin Van Luzen on here. Oh, that's close, Alex. Almost wheel to wheel. Contact in the straight nearly. And yeah, not a lot of room, guys, all sort of jockeying for position right now. Will they? Won't they? They'll settled in actually, single file, trying to get the best run, and now they're three wide. Here comes once Davies. Again. Nathan Davis on the inside. Good to take advantage. Three wide, you've got to hold your positions here, boys. Davis having a look. In through the middle is Van Luzenord. Good, that's good driving. More of that, please, lads. That's what we want to see. Some great driving. Three did wide ending the in the wall? right way. Did anyone go into the Wall of Champions in the first race? I haven't it? seen anyone go into the Wall of Champions. But yet we haven't got a champion yet, have we? So that's next that's next year. <laughs> Higgelin around the outside of McCauley. Von Holtz and Jurgis and Berryman all in that. there as well. Look at this. This is very, very close. Oh. Can't find where you are looking. Oh, 12. yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> Massive gaggle, this. Von Holtz, Jurgis, Mangan, Berryman, Thompson, Baxter, Grant and Honig. And Osterkamp having a look on White. He goes through as they're all piling into the hairpin. And also uh, uh, Rose was corner, very close as well. Just lost a, a bit of ground. Good hairpin here, Alex, isn't it? For a, for as simple as a slow hairpin is, it's a very good, um, very good overtaking place. Uh, it is, and I'll tell you what. You, you know the the thing with this car is everybody sort of complains about it. 
it's very difficult to get it down through the gears. And um, I have to yeah. say, that particular corner, as um, who's just flown into the pits? Uh, I have to I say, uh, Pedrozoli's out again. Oh. Where, where, I've got to look. Oh, no, it's not white. It's... I need to find out exactly where yeah. it happened. What it's, happened? Uh, oh, no, it is white. Right. I'm, not, I'm not sure what happened to David White there, but in the pit lane, nevertheless, if he got hit somewhere around that lap, Sponholt under all sorts of pressure from Jurgis, sorry, from Mangan. No, it's not Mangan, sorry. We'll get, I'll and get that there I'll get it right in a minute, in but I've got, to, I've got to find out what happened. No one can have this much bad luck. Let's see. Oh, good move oh. by... <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Are we going to do it? Do it in style, I say. Oh. Well, I've got to have a look at that now, haven't I, really? <laughs> what have you done? Have a look. Oh. Lusenord and, uh, and uh, Denton side by side. Lusenord up the inside into the uh, hairpin. But oh. I was about to say, the car is very difficult <laughs> to change down through gears, so getting it into that hairpin is very, very difficult because the car doesn't want to change down, so... Very, very I tricky. I shouldn't laugh, but I've never seen a car hit the inside wall and roll over. No. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. I feel so sorry for him. He's done not. He's not done a lot wrong in this series, really. But. Oh dear. Spawn halts. Oh. You get. You get a little tap there. By Grant. Maybe. Grauer and Honig then. No, actually Sutton in this race, it looks like. No, I don't see him. Keith Lee and um, and uh, Dan um, McCauley as well. Very, very close. We'll say another congratulations to Ash for his um, Subaru drive, his works drive for 2017. Alex, that's pretty major news for him. Awesome. Yeah, we talked about it in the first race as well. So All right, okay. stuff. Oh, Keith Lee up the inside. I'm just of, boring um, the viewers then. Daniel and uh, Daniel gives him the room. He comes Austin off the camp, camp now, very much on his tail. Pulls out from the slipstream. He's already got the inside. Could make it through here, mate. Yeah, he does. Good work by Rene Osterkamp. He comes uh, Thompson. Well, it's Macaulay, isn't it? Yeah, oh. Dear me, Manga nearly hits McCauley. Durgis is there as well. And uh, Oscar's connection is not the greatest at the minute as well, so who knows where the sim thinks oh, he yeah. is. You can see that. Be very, very careful. is going to be watching with bated breath to see where the Irishman is. Yeah, Dan, I think just let him go there. Wasn't worth it. Going to be under pressure from Jurgis as well. Good work. Look by those guys. It's a good battle going on for. Um... Oh no, that was the battle. Oh dear, that was the battle we were just watching. Davis and Hall as well. What a busy old um, weekend of broadcasting, mate, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, it's been absolutely non-stop. But the um, we had the Winter Series on Thursday. We had the V8s on Saturday. We had the Porsche. We had the um, ASRC. We had the IMSA, the yeah. Club Seventy Three, the BSR MX Five, and the Kia, and the Rikmatek, and the yeah. Rikmatek at two a.m. this morning. Yeah, really a uh, very very busy schedule for us recently. Oscar Mangan having a look now on Osterkamp. Oh, and again, it's going to be hard for Osterkamp, Alex, because he won't know where Mangan is either. We'll get the slipstream, though, uh, with Osterkamp. Yeah, got opportunity to jump straight back here, you would think. Two tenths of a second behind, closing in. Oh, little blink just to... Uh, just to trick him. But guess where I am? <laughs> the old um, James Bond talking oh, device. Somebody nearly it? into the wall of champions. That was very, very close for, uh, for Rene there. I think he did go into it. 
possibly... He lost the place to, to Jurgis there as well. Oh, he did it. just go into the wall. Well, if you survive it, you've not gone into it. That's the way I'm saying it. Well, he, went, <laughs> he hit it. He hit it. He didn't go into it. No. Yeah. Scuffing it's fine. Scuffing it's one thing. But, uh... Yeah, he did scuff it. All right. Samuel Bear leads by 4.1 from Martin Van Leusen. Van Leusen was 7 tenths per second quicker than the Apex Racing Academy driver on that previous lap. John Higgelang got past Paul Denton as well. Nathan Davis, right, with Michael Hall. Should we go on board with Davis, Alex, and you can take us through it? Do that. Do heading like down. The on board shots in this car. Down and into the, uh, the hairpin. Out of the corner, gets a little bit of draft. Well, we're three tenths of a second behind at the moment. Looking at the live timing, the speeds are not very, there's hardly any overlap of speed here. So I'm thinking Davis's car, probably not as trimmed out as what Hall's is, making it very difficult to overtake. Oh, Hall, just um, a little bit wide, can't quite get the exit he wants. So Davis closes in again, two tenths of a second. Still not a great overspeed, barely catching up. So this is what I said, it's, you know, it's one thing to have the speed in the corners, but Need to be able to get by. Oh, oh. It closes up massively under braking there as well, does Davis. That was only centimetres away. This is a tricky chicane, Alex, isn't it? To always see where that first part is. Yeah, very. It's almost blind, isn't it? So, mm. And I'll tell you what, the car does not react too well at all over that second kerb there. Really, you want to hammer oh, it Davis through there. Oh, Davis is going for it. Oh, oh he's, he's lost the back. It. Oh, and he's made it. <laughs> oh, what a good move. Michael Hall, though, still on the prowl. He's going to have a look as well. On the outside this time, Hall. Davies late on the brakes. Can he get it into the corner? He can. He's going to be vulnerable here, though. Into the hairpin. He has to pick the left side. Davies has the shorter path, of course. Oh, man, that's close. Davies goes deep. Hall also goes deep. Nathan Davis finally goes through a battle that lasted most of the lap and you've got Keith Lee and Rose centimetres away from each other as well, my goodness. Oh, and, Ro and Hall's having a look back at Davies. Rose down the inside. Goes through on Keith Lee. Here comes Keith Lee again. Brilliant battle. Some fantastic racing here on the iRacing MSA British Races Formula Renault Championship. The inside took a speed in. Oh, inside. that was good. That's how you do it, isn't it, into turn yeah. one. You commit to it, so no chance you of the to, um, you have of, to. Uh, Rose on the outside there at all. Yeah. Hall it's, still with uh, Davis as well. I think a lot of the time, mate, people get uh, people give the opponent a chance to come back because the move isn't decisive enough. That was brilliant. Fantastic stuff. 2.8 seconds at the front now. Half a second was the difference that time for Van Luzenog. It's going to be very tough for him to get there. He's going to have to drive his socks off here. Yeah, Sam's a good driver as well. Been very, very quick very this good. season. So even if he gets there, it's going to be difficult to, to get by. He's only going to have a half a lap at best. Oh, once yeah. again, oh, oh, he switches. Davis has Whoa. to go defensive into the uh, hairpin. They both again overshoot. Oh, look at that overshoot. as well. Oh, and Thompson nearly lost it as he was attacking Jurgis. Got a good run, though, now, Thompson. Down the back straight, the Olympic rowing late to the side. You can see Davis, Hall, and Heathley still at it. Oh, they, uh, that was Hall twitching all over the place there, and Keithley gets a good run on him round the outside. He's going to be clear. If he's not, he can just do a repeat of what he did just one lap ago, committed into turn one, and uh, that's that place for uh, for Jack Hall from defence, uh, from attack to defence in blink of an eye there, one little slip up. Thompson's got alongside Jurgis. Might be able to get through. There's Mangan. 
brilliant racing in this um, third race, Alex. I'm loving it out there. And Mangan's around um, Georges as well. As Georges just got a little bit out of shape trying to avoid uh, Josh. Georges fights back. And I'm waiting for the inevitable to happen. <laughs> Watching through his fingers, possibly, Alex's. <laughs> Do what Mangan can do. Mangan's going to have a look up the inside. This is almost a, oh, it's a very difficult place to overtake. Oh, oh someone's off. Oh, it was, it's uh, Davis. It's Davis. I think it's just a slowdown. I think he hasn't hit anything. Heathley still ahead of Hall. Uh, the gap at the front's down to 1.5 now. Very interesting. Here comes Hall, Alex, on Keithley. Oh, he was, I'll tell you what, he was side by side with Keithley and just caught the inside curve, and that's where he lost it. Keithley late on the brakes. Good job there. Everyone's giving those curbs quite a lot of respect as well, Alex, because they know that they can be bounced out into that outside wall, as we saw that happen to uh, Sebastian Vettel a few years ago. Yeah, I tell you, this car just does not react well to him as well. And you just saw there with Davis, you know, just touched it on the inside there, really Speaking under pressure, which. giving the car absolutely everything it could possibly get, and it just bit him really, really hard. Speaking of which, Davis on McCauley. Oh, it's a lovely move. That's a really good passing move there by Davis. Oh. He's got his. I tell you what, he's got his racing head on tonight, hasn't he? Not his. Uh, not the sort of over aggressive side that we've seen in the past right then here we go this is where it gets interesting one lap to go at the end of this straight Alex and Martin van Luzenod is right there with Samuel Libet yeah two tenths of a second away and I uh, don't know quite where he's caught those two seconds up because he was a miles away just a lap ago but they're side by side now and uh, Martin through. Sam just ducks back in on the slipstream. The Bear did a 34-0 and a 33-8 on his last two laps. Van Lusnod did a 32-7 and a 33-3. So 1.3 and half a second gained. And then on that lap, there's another 1.5. 132.4114 for Van Lusnod. I believe that's the fastest lap of the race, Alex. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. So absolutely flying out there is, uh, is Martin. Michael Hall has managed to get clear of the group behind. So Christian Rose and then Thompson and Mangan still going for it. Mangan's down the inside. No, oh dear. God, what a rubbish. Never mind. No, it's just clumsy. Clumsy as hell there. Yeah, just as, take a um, look at it back. Oh! Oh, it's close. Oh, Grauer out of control. And he's hit. He's just hit Oscar Manga. Well, well, we'll look at this after that as well. Look at me. It's breaking down on the final lap. Well, like you said, just clumsy. Really? That? So. Oh! Right, I mean, Grauer, I saw yeah. that with yeah with the growl as well. So here comes Van Lusenod. Alex is coming through the final corner. Got to be nice and tidy. Don't hit the wall. And Martin Van Lusenod wins race three here at Montreal. Samuel Libert second, third for Antoine Higlat. And it's going to be a great P4 for Paul Denton. Ahead of Jack Keithley, Faker, Simsport Europe doing a good job there. And oh, look at this gaggle coming across as well. This is Josh Thompson in 10th leading that away. So 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. All oh, very, very, very close. Very close. It was a really close race in the midfield, wasn't it? All the way down. Yeah, really. no one really could move forward. Like Pete Berriman right in there. He just couldn't move forward. They were just sort of that big group, big gaggle. So, and everyone slipstreaming everyone else there. Baxter and Depka coming across. Baker has managed to get Simon Hodge on the final lap. Yeah, Baker had to pit as well in this race, so he obviously had some problems early on 
Who's that with the front end? Ah, John Coffrey. The less said about his race, the better, I think. Yeah, he's still finished out there, hasn't he? So, Got scored point. points for his, uh, for his team. Well, that's it. I don't know how he finished, to be honest, after he bounced off every all and sundry in the first I don't lap, think but... he'll get the blame for that as well. I don't know. It's a tough one, you know, because he just got hit. And then after that, he really was just trying to get control of the car again. You know, it's, it's a tough have one. A, have a quick interesting look. to see what the uh, what the admins uh, say on that one. So um... to be fair, mate, he did hit David White, though. I think that's the thing so we did he hit David White or did David White hit him. That's the, that, you know, that's the that's the thing there's going to be the debating point because if uh, they say he hit him then definitely it's his fault if it's the other way around then it's he's just uh he's just the passenger at that point that so. might be a racing incident though <laughs> you can imagine everyone who's got collected in that but, if it comes up as racing incident uh, it's not a racing incident oh, facebook i don't think with great. um i think when he knocked tom Depker out of the way i don't think that's that's not a racing incident that's a bit of a misjudgment i think but um John's a good driver, he'll bounce back from that. Even though it was a bit of an appalling race. we will take you through the finishing order then. Round three of the evening. Can't remember which round it is overall, Alex. I, we know. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Not off the top of my head. Sorry, oh, I haven't looked at Sorry. <laughs> no preparation at all from myself. Uh, Martin Van Luzenod takes the win by 1.5 seconds with a good battle with Samuel Lebert. A race long... Dute, Antoine Higelin in third, Paul Denton fourth, fifth, Jack Keithley, sixth, Michael Hall, seventh, Christian Rose, eighth, Pascal Sturgis, Rene Osterkamp in ninth and tenth, Josh Thompson, eleventh, Nathan Davies, twelfth, Daniel McCauley, thirteenth, Peter Berryman, fourteenth, Oscar Mangan, fifteenth, Matthias Sponholtz, Kathleen Grau in sixteenth, seventeenth, Jos Tonig, eighteenth, Ashley Blake Hood, nineteenth, Stephen Baxter, Tom Depka in twentieth, twenty first. From the pit lane, Ralph Cullinan decided to not start on the pole position. Don't know really whether that paid off or not with 21st place. Dave Baker in 22nd. 23rd, Kip Stevens. 24th, Simon Hodge. 25th, John Goffrey. David White was 26th. He was one lap down. And Tangai Pedrasoli exited in spectacular style. Uh, was the only retirement out of the 27 who started. Now the reverse grid wheel is um, in play. Well and truly. Indeed. Let's bring it up. I'm going to spin and see who it is going to be. It's a full. It will be David White. It should be David White. Anyway, I believe he did finish the race. I'm just going to have to check that. Yeah, he did. Well, no, John finished as well, didn't he? Or was... White was behind. one lap down. Oh, so. sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, there goes the full. 26. Well, it's there 26. Oh, that's close. Yeah, it rocks back. So 26 it is. It is David White, then, who will be on pole position. He started third in this race, finished 26. So um, he'll be looking for better out of race four. So join us again in about 10 minutes' time for the final instalment of tonight's action from Montreal in the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Formula Renault Championship. We'll see you in a bit.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to the circuit of Villeneuve. Here for the I Racing MSA British Sim Races Formula Renault Series. Andrew Woodhouse and Alex Simpson with you on Apex Racing TV from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Alex, um, I love this track so much. The last three races have been very, very good. A lot of interesting stuff. Uh, this one, of course, sponsored by iRacing. Very happy for them supporting us. But um, what do you expect in this final race? Yeah, more of the same, I think, really. Um, you know, we'll have some great racing, some good overtaking, lots of drafting going on out there as well. Um, again, fairly reasonable reverse grid as well. So I think we will see, you know, some, uh, again, some, some accidents and things like that as a few people hit each other into the uh, hairpin on uh, in practice, just getting warmed up, of course. <laughs> yep. Might but, as well yeah, start as you mean to go on. Final race of the season. We always see this, even with the, uh, with the touring car series, don't we? This is where the elbows usually really come out. Yeah, I think I think that's right. Um, race four is overcast conditions, twenty-one degrees air temperature, twenty-one degrees track temperature. So it's about the coolest you can get. Um, so the drivers are going to have no problem with grip out there. We should see the fastest times we've seen all evening. Yeah, and what that will mean is that the track is also very slippery once for the first uh, lap or so. Well, not the track, but the Pressures yeah, yeah. will be low and things like that, so tyres slightly cooler. So, um, we may well see some be... drivers losing it in the first couple of corners. Yeah, it could be very tricky in the first corner. Not that they needed any encouragement to do that after the last race, anyway. <laughs> um, right, checkered flag falls on the warm up then. At any moment now, we're going to be heading to the grid and we will see that now. So, David White takes pole position for race four. John Godfrey alongside David Baker in third, Ralph Cullinan in fourth, fifth Tom Depka, sixth Stephen Baxter, seventh Ashley Blake Hood, eighth Jos Honig, Kathleen Grauer is ninth ahead of Matthias Sponholtz, Oscar Mangan is eleventh, Berman twelfth, Daniel McCauley in thirteenth, Nathan Davis fourteenth, fifteenth Josh Thompson, Rene Osterkamp sixteenth, seventeenth Pascal Georges, eighteenth uh, Christian Rose, nineteenth Michael Hall, twentieth Jack Keithley, twenty first Paul Denton, twenty second Antoine Higgler. 23rd Samuel Liebert, uh, Martin Van Luznord, who won the last race in 24th, Kip Stevens 25th, Pangai Pedrazzoli, he'll just hope to finish the race, I think, this time. Okay then, Alex, 10 seconds, who's your money on? I'm going to go with Martin on this one. I'm going to go with Confidence. I'm it's gonna fine. go with Baker. Okay then, the final time tonight here at Montreal. Green light is on. We are away. Decent start by White. White and Godfrey into the first corner again. Damn, it's White that goes deep. Godfrey around the outside. Oh, White's crashed. White into the wall. Oh, there's a few oh. of them. Honig and... Is that, Lee, is that uh, Mangan? I think it is, Oscar. Uh. Oh, and who's that at the back as well? Christian Rose involved as well. David White crashed into the wall. Oh, and then... Antoine lost it as well. And around, it's so tricky out there with the pressures down. I told you we were going to have problems. People spinning off left, right, and centre. There was another. Oh, they're all going. They're all going. This is carnage. Can you throw the? Uh, can you throw the safety car? No. Can't. I'm afraid. Absolute carnage out there. One of the worst starts I think we've ever seen. Oh, there's more crashing. Oh, Sponholtz. Sponholtz is gone as well. Oh, dear. Dear, dear, dear me. That's a, this is an appalling start. We have to call it, I think, as we see it, Alex. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, uh, no two ways about that. I don't so. understand. I'm going to go off on one here again. I don't understand why people just have no, they have no patience and no sort of consideration on the first couple of laps. It's overcast, it's cold out there, the tyres are not going to be where you want them. It's rule number one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do yeah, not just... crash on the first lap while your tyres are cold. Oh, good battle up if... front though, sorry. Who, who cares if you lose a couple of positions if you stay on the track? Baker versus Godfrey, something positive. Much better from Godfrey in the first corner. He decided he really 
did Alex learn from his mistake? He went to the inside turn one, which was the outside for two, and it actually worked exceptionally well because when David White crashed, it opened the door. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Didn't want to seem like it was picking on John earlier on, but it was a bit. Uh, it was a not a great two races for him. But he's a very improved driver. He's a very quick driver as well. Chiefly alongside um, uh, Daniel as well. Our fitness guru as well, Alex. I'm not sure a lot of people know that. To Godfrey. Yeah, does a does a lot of training, personal training, and all sorts. You felt the burn of um, John Godfrey's training schedule. Haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I have last year, big time. So, got to get back on it again this year. Oh, the, very close in the hairpin there. There's cars with no front nose. Oh, Pedrozoli's got no front nose cone. It's not stopping him really, though, is it? Still in there, looking on, getting close to Nathan Davis's car. Over the inside goes Higgelent on Keith Lee. Good, um, good move by Antoine. Who have we got just in front of them? Blake Hood lining up uh, or close to uh, John Godfrey. He'll be a bit nervous about this, of course, because um, yes. it was John that absolutely smashed him in the uh, hairpin in race two. So Broke the suspension, I think. Amazingly, Alex, we only lost four or five cars in that. Uh, yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six cars. We, uh, five cars in the pits. There's another one coming down pit oh, lane Denton now. and um, uh, Ralph Cullinan side by side. Denton the... wide, taking the Vettel line. Oh. Doesn't work. <laughs> ah, Doesn't work for him line. either. <laughs> one of the best lines. Um, best line for JP anyway, wasn't it? Well, yeah, absolutely. What a fantastic race that was. Oh, LeBear locking up, trying not to... Um, to hit Holt. Oh, Davies wide. Oh. There's a lot of damaged Renaults out there. Yeah, I'm, not oh, I'm not surprised, really. There was very little place for anyone to go after um, all that contact, so. Just, he's just not, I don't know, just not very um, oh, bear man driving out there. Oh, Bash! Godfrey hits the kerb very, very hard, and that's going to lose him two places. Blake Hood's through. Also, uh, that's Berryman, I think, up into second now. He'll be looking yeah. for a hat trick. He got uh, he got Ashley into um, into the final chicane, and then of course um, John made his mistake, so it opened up for him as well. So two in one corner. We mentioned uh, Van Lusenard earlier on, Alex. Uh, didn't get very far by the looks of it. No, sorry, Martin, cursed you there, I think. Yep. We'll take this curse in full effect. Good battle between Liber and Hall still. They're actually catching up to Daniel McCauley, isn't it? So, could be an interesting scrap over 8th, 9th, and 10th. Daniel McCall has done a good job this season, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, he has. I mean, he's um, he's had some poor luck as well. Um, fairly new to uh, the service, I believe. He only joined um, iRacing uh, a few months back, if I'm oh, not mistaken. Sorry. So, um, yeah, doing a great job out there. Pushing it with the old brake pedal. Oh, it's close in the hairpin as well. They this uh, close behind... Um, On the lead, Berryman Josh already Thompson. challenging Baker into the chicane. Side by side, good defending by Bay. Oh, Berryman! Oh, nearly lost it there. Coming out of the chicane, he almost ended up spinning. Could have been a disaster. But it was great driving by Baker to resist that. It was side by side, and um, Baker every bit as late on the brakes as the man who finished fifth in the World Championship last season. That good day Baker is, really, isn't it, Alex? In I'd any car. Oh, was that the wall? So, he sounded like there. the wall. It I don't know if he like did it. get yeah. any of it. Yeah, I tell you what, Dave is a, Dave's a phenomenal driver. He doesn't give himself enough credit. You know, he um, 
under a bit of pressure right now. Pete got a good exit here. But he's quick drive. in that Kia. He's quick in this. He's quick in the GT3s. You know, anything he puts his mind to, he's, he's very, very quick at. So, yeah, Dave, great driver. He also had a go at the um, Pro Series, didn't he? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, he, he did. did. Few, I don't did the, a few races, a few races I think. yeah. Daniel... Um, He'll get there, I think, though, in that car. Daniel's having some massive connection issues dropping down. Very, very... Um, oh, Berryman's apex. got a... Berryman's got a super cutback. Might be alongside the CQR car here. Oh, he's oh, he is alongside him. It's very close. Baker's not giving in. He managed to hold it last time. It's still side by side, the wheel to wheel. It's like Mansell and Senna out there. Baker on the inside again. Berryman gets the drive. Now, which way do you defend here, Alex? What's the preferred way? I think you do want the inside always, but um, it's like we've seen with uh, Keith. If you can commit through this first corner, you can get clear, and Peter does exactly that. Nice work. Baker didn't let him have it his own way there. Berryman, but uh, he, he goes through the Northern Irishman. Ashley Blake Hood's in a very strong third as well as he gets quite close to the wall on the exit of the chicane. Then the inside wall there on the right, I've hit that one. But we've lost LeBear as well, so probably ran into Michael Hall, did he? His oh I don't I don't know. His meeting um a couple of sort of if you ran into Michael Hall at the hairpin, I'd, I'd give up because he, he, he should have seen that coming. Oh, no, he's crashed. Oh, he got... Did he get beached? He's got beached, mate. Have a little look at that back. He's, he's done the old... Um, was it Juan Pablo Montoya? He got beached. Oh, he did run into Michael Hall. Ah. Have you, have you got this on the replay? Well, I've certainly got the beach... The beaching... He but did no. run into Michael Hall, then he tries to turn around, and now he's stuck. High centred on the curve, and there's nothing much he can do about that. But he was asking for that, wasn't he, really? The whole race he was nearly uh, running into I Michael I tell you Hall. what, I tell you what, look at who blinks, suddenly appears yes. out of nowhere. I did see I'm, that. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not Hall slamming the brakes on there, like going, what the, you know? No, no, you are, you are right, but... You've got you've got to be a little bit more. Um, if you've been nearly running into the same car over and over again, you've got to almost be, expect to expect that a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, Depka versus um, Higelin. Higelin sweeps through. Have a look, Keithley on Godfrey now. This is actually for fourth, so Godfrey defends the inside. Doesn't feel the need to go defensive. Keithley decides to throw it in. Very tough to overtake there, though, isn't it? It is one of the hardest places, actually. The braking zone's not particularly long there, unless you're fully alongside. Very, very difficult to try and outbreak. This is one of the tracks. It's possibly one of the only tracks that we go to where pretty much every corner is an overtaking opportunity. Yeah. Apart from that one, possibly. Yeah, I think, you're, I think you're right. I mean, even that is a, you know, you can still get moves done in there if you get a good exit. So, um, yeah, like you say, every corner has got a, got an opportunity. Now, Godfrey defending again from Keithley. Higgeland is lurking. Godfrey! Oh! Messes up the braking. Gets across the course. Here comes Higgeland. Got rear wing damage then. But he's still able to challenge Jack Keithley. Heathley's very good into this first corner. Oh, Higgins around the outside. And even though... I'm going to hold my breath a second now. I thought Keithley was going to be able to come back through. But yeah, um, for someone who's just as good into that turn one as what Jack Keithley's been, Antoine Higgins just better on that occasion. Brilliant. Yeah, very, very good. Very strong. Great, Great driving battle. from both. Terrific battle for 14th. Ralph Cullen and Nathan Davis, Rene Osterkamp. All up the inside of Godfrey as well. Hall has to watch his uh, nose. Hall just lost a bit of traction. Coming out of that chicane. 
Jacques Villeneuve crashed there in 2006. Good run by Hall. Driving nicely in this Formula Renault, Michael Hall, isn't he, Alex? Every week he just seems to get nice solid finishes. Got free a bit wide, but that's fine. Well, again, Hall's another, you know, BSR regular who knows what it takes to get himself into the um, into the showdown, you know? And, and he's like Baker, isn't he? He drives anything quickly. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's definitely going to be in the showdown at the end of the season, this Hall. So he had a couple of DNFs early on, but he's working his way back up through that table as well. He's always in contention, isn't he? And I think he's come the showdown where it's a bit more of a lottery. And you see possibly on that stage at uh, Sim Expo, potentially. It might be adaptability, the likes of Hall and Baker, that really does... Um, Come yep. into play, Alex, because they're all, they they know about jumping into different cars and adapting. So, what would be a different rig or a different? You know what I mean? This is the thing. It's going to be completely different, isn't it? Yeah. Wouldn't so make any difference though. Rigs, that... screens, pedals, you name it. The lot is uh, there's a there's a potential. It could be um, be anything. You know. <laughs> I know it's I know it's sort of a little taboo, but um, the Ve the the Vegas race. Um, a similar thing wasn't it? It was interesting to see the drivers adapt to the different the not being in their home environment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, drivers who you thought were gonna be really, really strong struggled a little bit, you know, and um I was obviously there and talked to Gregor, you know, and he said that he was really struggling with the equipment and things like that and the lag that was on the the screens and those are the things you've got to deal with and, and basically Bono come out of the blocks and was so so quick he just seemed to gel with the equipment really really well better than anyone there and uh, you know that's why he was quickest in every single session that weekend you know so so good and that's partly it isn't it you know uh, getting used to your surroundings especially in a, a, a different place in country or which, um, which Thompson will be the Hall. same situation that was very close. Didn't go for a move. Hall just got a little bit of uh, draft from uh, Godfrey. But uh, yeah, Hall uh, in a bit of a sandwich right now. You mentioned Tom Depker. I've absolutely no luck. He's having uh, a good run here to P6 at the moment. He's five seconds out of this group. Oh. As Thompson going through on Hall. Hall running a little bit wide through turn two, which is so easy to do. Oh, very. Just, uh, I don't know what it is about that corner. You don't get it quite right. End up over there near the grass, and that's what, what happened to Michael Hall. It's a bit dirty out there as well. A lot of marbles get chucked out to the outside. I have dared to show Tom on the screen. I feel like if I did that, it, would, it, it might just uh, he might just end up in a big pile of smoke. He's somewhere. on his own. But he might yeah, be all right. That's what I thought. He's got five seconds either side of him. He should be okay. Please. As long as he's not listening to the broadcast, <laughs> he should be fine. But yeah, good to see him um, getting a getting a good finish here. Now Rennie Osterkamp is coming up on Ralph Cullinan, but seeing Osterkamp's front wing absolutely mullered. He's going to struggle to pass him in a straight line. Might be able to get through to the hairpin if he has a go. Cullinan takes to the inside. Yeah, nothing Osterkamp can do there. Osterkamp, who had the overtake of race one, probably the overtake of the night, actually. Fantastic move to the chicane against Ash Sutton. Yeah, I have second that. Definitely one of the best we've seen. One of the best I've seen for a long time. Look, you just can't get the um, the effective slipstream with that damage, Alex, creating so much more drag on that front wing. Yeah, he can sort of stay with, can't he? That's about it, yeah. really. He's right. Even though he's getting better momentum. He might be able to outbreak Cullinan, possibly, but Cullinan's been, been good on the break so far. Osterkamp's got no choice but to just stay behind. And he's got good handling on that. Oh, and again, he gets a great run out, but no straight line speed. Struggling with the acceleration. And he's... He's a top driver in this series, Rennie Osterkamp. We haven't seen his potential tonight, apart from that, possibly that one race. Pete Berryman's checked out, by the way. Six seconds he leads by. 
over Dave Baker. Ashley Blake Hood is now coming under a bit of pressure from Antoine Higgler. And there'll be just one lap to go again. It's a similar situation as to what uh, Liber found himself in with Van Lusenord in the last race. You're Ashley Blake Hood, you just eyes forward, concentrate oh. on the job. It just went in a bit deep there and got a poor exit, so that gap's going to be even shorter. Maybe Higlin will have a look now, but yeah, that's what you wanted to do. Just less attention to what's going on behind and just focus oh, on your... Oh, but now he needs to focus on the, the car of Antoine Higlin, because he's just pulled off a fantastic pass out of not really a lot. And yeah, a mistake what, really fantastic. from Ash is what allowed him in there. Without that, I don't think he would have, uh, don't think he'd have had an opportunity. Still a great move, though. I tell you what, you've got to give it to um, give it to your boy Pedro Zoli because oh, as um, Osterkamp and Cullinan, Osterkamp's now got a good run. He should have the line here. Turn one, and he does get it done, and he'll clear him before two. Um, yeah, I was going to say you have to give it to your boy Pedro Zoli. He's going around with no front wing, no front nose cone, at thirteenth place. It's probably hey. the best result of the night, is it? I'm not going to say nothing. Or anything, even because it's the last lap. <laughs> you know, we, no. want him, we want to see him get to the checkered finish line. In, fair, in flag, fairness, come on. <laughs> in fairness, this is a man who rolled the car at the hairpin. So, oh, Nathan is, Davis is, is in uh, a spot of bother. It looks like he, <laughs> his car yeah, is fuel. worse. His car is no, no, his car is worse. I think he wants Pete to go through, so he'll just be one lap down, and that's him. His race done. Oh, yeah, exactly that. Here comes Pete Berryman, though. Davis. Peter Berryman. Hat trick in Canada. Throw the hats out onto the ice. Because he's got the third one. Dave Baker coming across. Taking a, a really good second. And so Higgland third with that damage. Very good driving. As it was Ashley Blake Hood as well. Jack Keithley in fifth. And they're still coming across. But Osterkamp and Cullen and still side by side now. It's a lap later. Into the final corner then, let's see. Well it's all about this man. Sorry, we need to point out this is as good as a this is as good as a race win as far as I'm concerned. Pedrozoli coming across to finish the first race of the night. <laughs> oh, very close there, but Cullen oh. with the straight line speed, as that you was mentioned. Close. Oh poor old Pedrozoli. He's done nothing he's barely done anything wrong in the series. Um since it started and just constant nonsense to be honest constant uh, bad luck and crashes into him from other people but yeah coming across and getting the finish right then take you through the finishing order for round four of the evening at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal. Peter Berryman takes his third win of the evening over David Baker by nine seconds. Antoine Higlant was third and 22nd on the grid. Really, really good race from him. Ashley Blake in fourth. Fifth, Jack Keithley from 20th. Sixth, Tom Depka also needed a bit of luck and a good finish. Uh, seventh, Josh Thompson. Eighth, Michael Hall. Ninth, John Godfrey. And tenth was Daniel McCauley. Paul Denton finished 11th ahead of Christian Rose. Tange Pedrozoli was in 13th. Um, Ralph Cullen in 14th, with 15th being Rene Osterkamp. Kip Stevens was 16th, finishing another race. Josh Honig in 17th. Uh, Nathan Davies was one lap down, as we saw with his damage. And the cars we lost, well, most of them either on or as a result of that first lap. Absolute chaos out there. Samuel Liber. Um, it was a separate incident, eight laps down, and then ten laps down or more. Stephen Baxter, Matthias Sponholz, Oscar Mangan, David White, Catalin Gra, Pascalis Georges, and Martin Van Luzenot. Well, then, mate, that's that's that for another week. Yes, and um, um, we had we've a... seen. Some great racing and one of the worst starts I think we've ever seen. Yeah, totally. You know, mixed uh, mixed bag, isn't it, tonight, really? Yep. Um, I think we see that quite often at Montreal, um, to be fair, with the starts and stuff like that. But uh, yeah. Well, I've been guilty of that in the past, as you know. Yeah, yeah. 
last um, season that didn't go very well, did it? <laughs> quite funny. We've got we've we've got a couple of BSR sort of series, you know, out there, and um, you know, running this that's full of cash prizes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And both of them very very um, susceptible to cold weather and first lap, you know, chaos kind of thing. Because the key is exactly the same. When the track is cold, the rear end of the key is all over the place. <laughs> Just let's just have a little bit of a think then. What what is what is the cause in your opinion then? Is it a lack of patience? I, I mean, don't think the, it's a lack of skill because these drivers are all uh, capable. Uh, yeah, I mean, just yeah, you're right. They just see an opportunity to try and get past, and they're nailing it. And of course, then the car spins because it is very very difficult to drive in the cold when it's re- the track temperature is really cold. If you don't whack the pressures up massively to compensate for the first lap or put some extra fuel into it, because the the car's quite light as well, um, there are things that they can do to to you know to make it a bit better. So you know, a bit more downforce. I say a bit more fuel keeps the car a little bit more stable, and um, you know, and you're only losing about a tenth of a second a lap in pace. Yeah. And um, you know, whack up the tire pressures a bit as well. That helps to um, get them into the right sort of area a little bit quicker. Um, but yeah, again, it all compromises your speed um, after sort of like lap two. You know, once everything's uh, got into its the you know working range, so um, take it. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think you know if you can if you're at the front on the grid, I think it's worth such sacrificing a little bit of speed so that you can stri- you know try and streak away in that early lap while everybody's struggling, and then let the field crash behind you. So. I mean, I'm going to um, harp in back to when to the race meeting I did here in the Kia, but the first race was very, very cold, and you just had to tiptoe the first few laps and, and just go so slowly to just not hit people, and you have to make that sacrifice. There were cars crashing into the, the walls and everything, and the only reason I managed to get through it was because I just took it so slowly. Do you remember the race that Adam did at Donington where he passed about... 20 cars on the first lap. I've never seen someone drive so slowly on the first lap, and he made 20 positions. Because it was, it was such cold weather, and, and, and he just had, that's what he had to do to, um, to get round. So, yeah, you've just got to, I don't know, exercise a little bit of caution. And the thing is, if you do, others around you will as well, you know? Yep. You would yeah. think, eventually. So, um... Rant, rant finished. <laughs> hey, rant finished. But, um... Still an enjoyable night's action, though, mate. We cannot, um, we cannot take it away from that. And uh, yeah, we look forward to bringing you more of that next week. So um, yeah, that's it from myself, Andrew Woodhouse, from Alex Simpson, and of course we had uh, Lee Thompson with us earlier on as well. Um, join us on Thursday for the British Sim Racers Winter Series. The Master MX5 has provided some fantastic racing so far in that series, and we'll see more of it hopefully on Thursday night. So from all of us here at Apex Racing TV, it's goodbye from Montreal, and we'll see you later on in the week. Goodbye.